slowly move the trailer to the left and I want the little girl to run across now. Hold that trailer there. Now move the trailer off. Right, now I want the old man with white hair and glasses to cross the road. Come on, quickly. Look this way. Now walk up to the left. Okay, fine. Now let's have the man in the pink cap. Put the cigarette in your mouth. Good. And I want the two girls to come in from the right talking to each other. Now I want the Jamaican family. Father first. Look in front of you. Now the mother of the two boys. And I want the smaller boy to point to the right and now cast the glance behind him. Fine, now I want the girl with the bag under her arm to walk to the right. Now let's have the man rubbing his eye. Good. Right, now I want everything to sink slowly down as the five boys come by. Hold it. And I want the clock to move jerkily towards me. Stop. Now, I want the long hand to move at the rate of one revolution every hour and the short hand to move at the rate of one revolution every 12 hours. Now, two pigeons fly across and everything comes up again until the girl chewing gum walks across from the left. Okay, now the van, the woman and the boy, the man with the bag of chips, the car roof, the whole car, the old man, the car, the car and the boy, the boy, the motorcyclist and the lorry. Now, when the woman at the window looks in this direction, I want everything to move a bit further away. <coughs> right, let's have the man in the white boiler suit coming in from the right. Stop at the lamppost and fold your arms. Now, look around you. Walk back to the left again. And look left and right as you cross the road. Now, I want the man reading Exchange and Mart to come in from the right. Now a man comes by and bites his nails, two pigeons fly past from right to left, and two boys run past from left to right. The woman at the window looks this way and then goes on talking. In a second I want four boys to come from the left, and I want one of them to look this way and flap his arms up and down. I'd like the boys to remain in more or less the same position while everything else moves to the left and goes away a bit at the same time.
Lift up your arm. Now bring it down. Now I want the man with the turban and briefcase to come in from the right. And now the band marks University of London, Senate House, London WC1. In the cinema queue, I want to see a boy and his mother. The boy will be about eight years old and his mother about 32. They'll both have collar-length hair, his dark and hers fair. She will be wearing a suede coat with a white imitation fur collar. They'll be talking to each other and looking around them. Now, I want the man coming in from the left in the grey peak cap to put on his glasses. The boy will look at his watch and yawn, then look at it again and say something to his mother about the time. Three children eating chips, the French woman, the window cleaner in his van, the green grocer, the pigeon, the red jaguar, the taxi, the man, the van, the negro with the briefcase and the newspaper, the woman firmly gripping the woman firmly gripping the hands of her two young sons. They stop. And now they cross the road. The man in the grey pink cap takes off his glasses again and puts them in his breast pocket. The man with the walking Nick is going home. The dentist continues on his way to the bank and the two naughty boys appear from behind steels, the plate glass manufacturers, and cautiously cross the road. Steels is situated in an area with a high immigrant population, predominantly West Indians and Greeks. Outside the building, a moment's made doors, the board advertising vacancies at the firm. Until recently, I thought the jobs were advertised on the board in two languages, English and Greek. However, a few weeks ago, I studied the board carefully and realised that I had been wrong. Each vacancy has its own slat in the board, and the words, glass cutters, bevelers, bench fitters, etc., are cut out of these slats, which are made of perspex. When a vacancy no longer exists, the slat advertising it, which has a central pivot at each end, is swivelled around. The words that I believed to be Greek were in fact upside down and back to front English. Steels also has another interesting feature. Along each wall of the building, there are eight large doors that are kept wide open throughout the year. I'm shouting into a microphone on the edge of a field near Lechmore Heath, about 15 miles from the building you're looking at. I'm surrounded by electricity pylons and trees. The sky is beginning to cloud over. In the distance, I can see a middle-aged man in a brown duffel coat. He's got a dog with him, which looks like a Labrador, and I think he's got a helicopter in his pocket. In a tree about 20 yards away, I can see a large blackbird with a wingspan of about nine feet. This young man has just robbed the local post office and is attempting to appear inconspicuous. He is trying to remain calm, but his hand is sweating as he grips the butt of the revolver in his raincoat pocket even harder. He's wondering whether the woman at the window would recognise him if she saw him again. The burglar alarm is still ringing.